My name is Stefan Drea from Ertico ITS Europe and uh, together with our project partners from SAFER, VTT and University of Leeds we are going to present the achievements from the CART coordination and support action which focused on the coordination of automated road transport deployment in Europe. So the uh, CART action uh, was a two years effort that started in October 2016 and will end uh, now this month. It's, uh, it has been conducted uh, together with its sister project Scout, which ended in June. Um, so the action is consisting of three main pillars. So one is the network, the knowledge, and the last one is the strategy, the European strategy for connected automated driving. So in total, the action gathered 36 consortium partners and 51 associated partners that we have included during the two years of the project. In the first activity, the network. So uh, the network, the action actually uh, um, brought together a large network of uh, stakeholders and experts in the CAP domain that met on a regular basis during joint stakeholder meetings, new uh, conferences or workshops that have been organized by the consortium in order to advance towards consensus building on challenges and needs for the deployment of connected automated driving, eventually leading to harmonized solutions and uh, deals. Uh, these activities from the network then fed into a knowledge base, so which is a comprehensive knowledge base of the knowledge that we have in Europe about projects but also pilots and in order to foster the exchange of information between the different activities in CAT. And in the end, this knowledge fed into the development of European strategies, so with the definition of future research needs, strategic challenges for automated driving and the alignment of national action plans. All the work in the in, uh, CART was uh, split according to uh, uh, 10 thematic areas uh, that represent key challenges from the domain uh, of automated driving. So the main achievement, so from the CART network point of view, we uh, contributed to the organization of the UCAT conference in 2017 together with the four DGs uh, from the European Commission and in 2018 we organized uh, the CAT symposium 2018 as well with uh, our uh, system uh, project SCOUT. Uh, from the international cooperation, the uh, um, CAT uh, partners are involved in the trilateral art working group uh, that uh, brings together stakeholders from uh, Europe and US on several topics either for information exchange or for uh, direct collaboration depending on the, on the interest of the topics. Uh, then we organize several joint stakeholder uh, forums and uh, meetings together with uh, AirTAC to define the RNI uh, strategies and we organize a series of workshops on connected and automated driving pilots which were aimed at exchanging best practices and information about pilots in Europe but also at national level and we define common actions that we can work together on for the future. So as I said, the work has been structured according to 10 thematic areas. So each of the thematic areas had a dedicated working group and each of the working groups produced position papers where challenges, position, state of the art, gaps have been identified. So all these 10 thematic papers are available on the Connected Automated Driving website for download. In the second stage, we have also uh, developed a CAT knowledge base. So the knowledge base currently includes information about all the uh, research uh, projects and pilots that are running in Europe. But we also uh, try to include international projects as much as possible. Uh, when the information is available. And the ambition is that we want to go beyond just uh, providing uh, project information but also including results from the CAT project based on the deliverables, national roadmaps, national testing regulations, an overview of, of the current situation in emerging markets, impact assessment framework and KPIs, and finally a who's who as well, which should allow them to identify collaboration opportunities uh, with part between partners. For the tools, at the moment the information is available on the Connected Automated Driving.eu website, but we also developed a collaboration with the Trivis uh, database, which is uh, from the European Commission.
international aimed at supporting the uh, development of the Stria roadmap and monitoring its progress. So what we do is then when there is uh, any project that is already available to us, we simply refer to it and we help Trimis in setting up uh, the project information and updating it if when, it's, uh, when there are some, uh, some uh, relevant information that need to be added to it. So finally, all this uh, information and these networking activities feed into the definition of roadmaps. So we have been working with uh, AirTrack on the Connected Automated Driving Roadmap. Uh, which was uh, published uh, in the ITS Congress in Strasbourg two years ago. Uh, so that was that included the definition of the eight R&D topics for the short term, for 2020, and also five aspects from, uh, for the long-term vision for 2050. So the AirTrack uh, Connected Automated Driving Roadmap is available on the AirTrack uh, road uh, documents, which are available here, or at the AirTrack booth uh, in whole E. Then another important contribution was the uh, support for the development of the Strategic Transport Research and Innovation Agenda, the STRIA, uh, Connected Automated Transport Roadmap, developed by the European Commission. So uh, this roadmap was published during the first mobility pack package in 2017, but uh, with the release of the third mobility package this year in May, the Commission launched a new consultation process where they are developing uh, more actions related to the initiatives that they have uh, developed. So this process is ongoing and uh, the activities there are led by uh, mostly CAFT partners. And this, can, this is reflected in the uh, thematic areas that have been identified in Syria, which are really a perfect match currently with the thematic areas that we had identified already in the CAFT project. With that, I'm going to go to Eric for the uh, leadership in Florida. Thank you. Okay, my name is uh, Eric Swanberg. I am uh, represent representing SAFER at Chalmers University. And today we're going to talk about the data sharing um, and the data exchange platform that has been developed in the uh, in, uh, character project. First, the current status of the uh, AD, uh, within the AD pilots. The discussions are mainly targeting the GDPR, of course a big thing for us, uh, collecting uh, data about uh, personal data. Uh, IPR is of course very important, the IPR factor within these projects. Uh, liability is something that everyone from OEM side is very aware of. Uh, and it's, it's something that the OMs need to take to consider when they share the data. Common format data is another topic that we need to know to, to, uh, to utilize for uh, uh, to share the data in an efficient way. Aggregated open data sets, how can we actually anonymize these data sets is also another topic. Uh, the main thing that I would say is right now that data reuse is getting more and more attention. It's getting more mature. And we can see a lot of um, uh, examples from, from uh, data sharing uh, within Europe. The Cartra Data Exchange platform <coughs> has three main components. From the methodology, we have the Footnet Data Sharing Framework. From dissemina dissemination, we have the Data Catalog. And we also have storage and access in terms of re data repositories, EA infrastructures, and also a data access model. All these three components go into the data exchange platform. So, where are we right now in Europe? Well, we have the data sharing framework. It should be used in any project that actually collects this type of data. We have a data catalog that we should use more. But, in terms of storage and access, still we are missing that vital component. We have open archives in terms of EU DAT. We have the data access models, they are, uh, we have proven that they are uh, working, but we don't have data provision and funding after the end of, of uh, a data collection project. That's why we propose a strategy or data sharing funding scheme for pilot and FOT data that would actually um, be, be seen as a, a reuse accelerator for all this uh, data that has been collected. It's important that the final data set um, 
is prepared and documented uh, within the, the, the project that actually collected the data. But we also need the funding programs to, to uh, also not only fund the open data sets, but also the in-depth large data sets that has been uh, collected in Europe for the last 10 years. A perfect example for this is the Lindholm and AI uh, Center that has been um, just initialized by the Swedish government. It's a data factory where we actually see that we can that, that it's stated that we need good quality data sets to provide uh, good AI research. So this is a new initiative. It's work in progress. It's going to be really interesting to follow this. It's a good example of how you can actually provide means and funding to, to have good quality data sets for AI research. And then finally, will actually the AI be the main factor for provision and funding of transport data for research? That's something that we will explore for the next in the next few years. Okay, I leave to Satu. Thank you. <coughs> so my name is Satu Innamar. I work at VTT, the Technical Research Center of Finland, and uh, I want to present to you this trilateral impact assessment framework, which was collaboration between the Europeans, US, and Japan. And it's a high-level uh, framework, so it means that it does not go step by step. It's not like a cooking book, how to do the evaluation, as there are so many different types of, of impacts and so many different types of uh, automated driving systems that can be evaluated. Uh, instead, we focus on things that could facilitate so that you understand if you are taking somebody else's evaluation work, that what is it that they actually have assessed, uh, which kind of impacts they have looked into, so that you could either compare your study in a, in a good way or you could complement. And also we want to facilitate meta-analysis in, you know, in coming years once we have more of these tiny projects have been completed. So this uh, framework includes uh, the classification of evaluated systems and services and, and uh, instructions how to do that. Uh, it also explains or gives kind of glossary to 12 different impact areas explaining what do they mean and it also needs recommendations for the KPIs to be used to, to express the impact in that area. We also uh, explain how you can utilize uh, this kind of systematic ways of describing the impact mechanisms uh, so that you can understand and show how do, you, how do these uh, different impacts, how are they linked to each other and how do they affect each other. We also uh, give some general recommendations related to experimental procedures and, and data sharing linked to the same data sharing framework that Eric just mentioned. We also have a KPI repository as a last year we did this uh, international study or survey on key performance indicators because it was hard to, to we had this uh, first version of this framework came out in 2017 and then we understood that okay it's important to give some recommendations on these key performance indicators but it's hard to decide which ones to, to take there as a, on, on the short list. So we decided to make a survey and ask from this international expert community. And we did that last year. We got 77 answers all over the world. And the outcomes are also can be found from this connected automated driving.eu web website. And those most important ones are now taken to the framework, which was updated in April 2018. But you can find from, well, both from this uh, KPI report, but also from the frame framework, also this full list, list of, of KPIs, so that if you are making a specific study, you might even find, in addition to those three or four recommended ones, to some other KPIs that you can use. And then the last uh, piece of work that I would like to present, uh, it's an activity ongoing in, in Carfe and uh, it's an expert assessment of the impacts of connected and automated driving. So they have a group of more or less 10 or 12 European experts in this field and they have been uh, browsing through different nine different uh, impact areas and four different scenarios and they have been uh, considering on, or making assessment on whether these impacts, whether they are positive or negative, whether they are large or small and what is the uncertainty included in this assessment. And that is um, currently uh, still they are finalizing the report as, as 
Uh, so we are here now during this week and it should come out pretty soon. So it is an impressive work of, of really reasons behind what would be the factors causing decrease or increase and and all the, the assumptions that you need to make behind these estimates. But it's a nice package, an overview that what can be expected of, of these in different type of scenarios uh, dealing with different future years and different types of transport systems. And now to my colleague, Juan. Hello, my name is Yvonne Barnard. I'm from the University of Leeds in the UK. And I will present the last uh, part of this uh, presentation. We uh, have worked uh, in Carter uh, on the methodology for field operational tests, something that has been going on for nearly 10 years, I think, with constant updating of the so called FESTA methodology that uh, helps uh, projects to set up, conduct, and uh, field operational tests and analyze the results determining the potential impact. There is a, a handbook, uh, currently version 6, but in the Cartwright project we uh, worked on seeing what that methodology would mean for pilots and later on field operational tests on automation. So. What we are doing at the moment is updating that handbook, not completely, because it's a very uh, big handbook, but we are adding sections on what this methodology would mean for projects that are addressing road automation, where the, well, where the issues are, what kind of things we have to take into account, and of course there are a lot of issues arising if you're not just evaluating some uh, ADA system, if you're looking at uh, road automation, so you, you get new research questions. Uh, you might be testing a whole vehicle instead of just a function. We're always struggling with baseline, meaning that what do you compare your uh, new system, your new vehicle with no automation or lower levels of automation? So how do you do that? So, and of course the biggest problem is always how do we scale up the results to a European or even uh, international uh, level. We've also been working on microfesta for those smaller projects. Not the big, big pilots, but there are small projects on national levels where we also want to see some good evaluation. How However small, but we want to see results so we learn more about automation. So, results will be uh, available soon. So, come to uh, my next slide. Again, back to impact assessment because evaluation, automation, it's all about not only does the system work properly, but it's about what will it mean for society. What will be the impact if you have automation on a larger scale? Uh, so, the question is always what kind of scenarios do we use? What kind of roadmaps? Uh, Airtrack has been working on those roadmaps together with Airtrack, but we also made a little bit of a play out of it. Called a serious game, but we are not that serious. Uh, it's about uh, the impact of automated driving. You have these very complicated impact paths, and we try to make them a little bit more simple, starting with a little story of someone uh, living in a neighborhood where you can use some automated uh, vehicle. And it's on the website, it's running over there in the vertical uh, booth. You can uh, play around with it, look at some impact path, give your comments, look at what would happen if something, uh, for example, a, a big uh, hack into automated vehicles. What would do that, that mean for your whole impact path and for public acceptance, for example? So, give it a try, it's online. Uh, we, uh, we have a folder where you can find the URL and we hope you join our session on 
Thursday afternoon.